25.25. Hey y'all, artist poet girl here, also known as APT Jamie. And today we're going to work on that mixed media uh, frame that I uh, showed you guys before. Uh, you guys said, yes, you want to see how to do it. So here we go. This is corrugate, not to be confused with cardboard, okay? Corrugate is wavy pieces of heavy paper sandwiched between heavy paper. Makes corrugate boxes, okay? Well, most of us lovingly refer to them as cardboard boxes. Anyway, that right there is an actual piece of cardboard. It's really heavy paper that's been compressed and laminated together to make a board out of card paper. So we need the Dollar Tree frame because we're really just going to be using the back part, the easel part, and I'm going to end up making my piece bigger, which will require me, as you'll see, towards the end-ish where I glue on an uh, actual piece of uh, chipboard just heavy paper all smashed together and laminated. So I'm making my uh, piece bigger because I'm gonna, I, I want the option to either hang it by the little round doohickeys on the back or stand it up as an easel frame. If you already have an easel frame, you don't need to go buy one. I didn't have one, so I had to go to the Dollar Tree and pick this up, okay? And I'm gonna have to find something else to do with the rest of the frame and the glass that I am not using in this project, okay? It's because I want it bigger. Uh, see that I'm pointing out the little round doohickeys. Oh, in this video really originally took me like four or five, 27 hours, and I whittled it down to under 30 minutes. So then this is like the fifth time I've edited it down. Oh, and it's gonna be three parts. Did I say it was gonna be three parts? I originally was gonna be two, but now it's just gonna be three. Cause it's just, you know, it's got me winded, y'all. So I want to include my easel stand um, to increase my size because I don't want it to be visible if I'm hanging it on the wall. Okay? And I'm going to try real hard to stay in frame, y'all. <laughs> I, don't, I don't promise, guarantee that, but I'm going to try to. So um, I'm like talking to myself, telling myself, that's going to be too big. No, it's not going to be too big. Yeah, it's going to be too big. No, it's not going to be too big. But anyway, I went for it. I initially draw with pencil and I will go over all that with a Sharpie so that y'all can see the lines better. Cross fingers. And um, trying to decide where I want my focal image because you need to sort of consider your um, the theme you're going to go with, which is, is easier to go with the theme. Then you can pick all your little metal embellishments uh, based on your theme-ish, okay? And uh, you want a center focal point. Now you can put that uh, in the center or you can offset it towards the top or the bottom, uh, one side more than the other or not. You can also, I'm putting this in a portrait orientation, you can also put your easel and plan yours out in a landscape orientation. It's perfectly fine. If you don't want to have a flat center focal portion, you can uh, put it, your stuff in a box. But you do need to plan that out uh, at this point. Okay, so you need to have in mind what's your focal point. And I don't have one yet, sort of, maybe, sort of. And um, so that you can kind of plan that out. I know. You want to sort of, yeah, have an idea and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anywho, I'm basically trying to center that up and you can precisely center it. I think I end up going with mine uh, more towards the bottom instead of the actual center because I just want to make things more difficult for myself. Okay, which is why this video was originally like 27, 25 day long video, okay? So I know y'all happy I got it whittled down to under 21 minutes, just under, just under. So I'm trimming that down and now I'm going to be drawing out lines uh, for my, um, my corrugate tiles, okay, because that's what we're making. We're going to be making tiles from corrugate. Likewise, you can do this with um, 
polymer clay tiles or and wood tiles and just any old kind of tiles. This particular project happens to be corrugate. All right, now bear in mind, corrugate is not that easy to cut. It doesn't always want to cut straight and it's thick and it's hard and all that other stuff. So keep that in mind, all right? Keep your craft blade, craft knife, sharpish. All right, and be careful, don't cut yourself. Just saying. So I'm lining out for my tiles. I don't want them all to meet up perfectly in the corner. I want to offset them. So that's that's why that's kind of that way. Now I have, even while reviewing my video, decided a couple things I could have done more butter. But of course, once you watch this, uh, sort of get in, uh, in mind um, how you're going to do yours because there's certainly some ways to save time and energy, I'm sure. So there's my sharper, sharper, my sharpie pen, so you can see the black lines, y'all. And I'm just going to keep on drawing out uh, my lines. The more lines you have, the more cuts you make. Okay? Um, they can be uniform in size, not uniform in size. They can be perfect squares, not perfect squares. It's all up to you. One of mine ended up being really tiny, and one of them ended up being kind of big. Now I lost the footage where I actually numbered out my tiles on my map. As you can see, I numbered each little tile. I made a copy of it because I'm going to cut the copy apart. That's my actual map. The other one is the, um, the map I'll use to reassemble everything back together. Now I'm cutting these in section and this is where, uh, well, after I cut out my sections, well, I'll just wait till we get to that part because, you know, I'm confused enough already, y'all. As you can see, um, I'm cutting out sections that are very happy together and leaving my focal center, focal point uh, square in one solid piece. We're going to set that aside because we don't need that part yet. Now that's where my copy came off, so I'm going to trim that part off. I don't need to make it even more bigger than I already made it. Okay. See, just lining that back up. See, it still fits. Okay, it's good. Straighten out the line. And my, my lines end up not being straight, and that's okay. So, this is where I should have used my glue stick to glue them onto my core get as I'm cutting out my sections, but I didn't do that. I'll glue stick later. So I'm trimming out uh, each section and I'm using my uh, my ruler as a straight edge. So I, wished I sure wished I'd have glued them down with the glue stick. Because you don't want it permanently glued. You just want it lightly stuck down. Okay? Because it makes it easier to pull off the papers later. Because you don't need the number paper. Okay? Okay. And you're going to need uh, several sheets of designer paper. Oh, there's a list of ingredients in the description box below, along with the link to journal artista Paula Phillips, who originally is the one that explained to several of us that corrugate is not cardboard, and cardboard is not corrugate, although most people commonly refer to it as cardboard boxes. Good, good. So anyway, it's very easy to miscut, which I was sort of pointing out to you, and uh, just trimming that off. And this is not a precise, exact kind of uh, project, y'all. So if that's something you're wanting, you might just want to go store-bought something. <laughs> I do enjoy the process because, as you know, I made two of these. Mm -hmm. Well, and yeah, made two of them. And I'm very happy with them both. Just saying. So, and you can have, uh, you know, your corrugate lines all going one way or another way. Entirely up to you. Corrugate's fun to play with. As y'all know, I did an art piece. I'll try to remember to link to it in the iCards. And uh, really happy with that outcome. It made me happy. And it won a blue ribbon if I say so myself. 
saying so. Teet, teet, my own horn. So here's glue stick. I'm just going to run uh, just a quick little line of glue stick on there. I know it looks like I did it twice, didn't it? But anyway, I'm sticking that onto my corrugate section. And I will be cutting out each individual tile. Uh, going to do all my sections before I start cutting, evidently. Evidently. <laughs> I guess I show it all to you. I don't know. Uh, portions of this video have definitely been way sped up, y'all. Like I said, it's a three-part video. Okay, the other parts will get uh, shorter, I do believe, if we're lucky. <laughs> so it's a whole lot of do this and do this and do this and still do this some more. So, anyways, am I ready to start cutting again? I'm ready to start cutting out uh, my individual tiles. And that is a metal ruler. And like I said, you want to keep your blade sharp. Uh, the sharper your blade, the less likely you are to cut yourself. Because it's when your blade is dull that you tend to push and pull a lot harder than you would if it was sharp. And that's when slippage can cause accidents. Okay? So I cut through, and sometimes you have to make several uh, cuts. And, um, Scissors can come in handy as well. So there you go. And I'm fixing to speed this up like 20 million times faster. <laughs> Cut out parts of it. And um, yeah. So that's what we're doing. Cutting out the tiles. As you can see, they're all numbered. Those are important. Number in the back of the tile now because in a little while I'll be pulling that piece of paper off the front. Because that's just that's just a map number, okay? Yeah, yeah, there's some redundancy going on, but that's okay. And if you're using the number nine and the number six, be sure to use a hash mark underneath the number nine and number six so that you know that's the bottom of it. Otherwise, your six and nine can get confused because that's what happens. I just happened to stack all my cut tiles in that box over there, and here's my map. And... Um, I'm going to lay them out because you don't want the same designer paper next to each other. Okay? You can. You can do anything you want. You can even use your own painting paper. You don't have to use store-bought scrapbook designer papers as we so lovingly call it these days. Okay? So, I'm um, going to take my papers and... Uh, the one that I'm going to use for the center focal point, I'm just going to use that paper in that one spot. That's the only place that particular paper is going to be at. So, that was that. Now, what are we doing? I'm just getting out some pieces. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I got two number ones. Oh, what happened? See, that one number one is really tiny. That's the little tiny piece that I told you. I ended up with one really small one. See? It's number 12, but it takes me a little while to figure it out. I think it's number 12, but I want to be sure it's number 12. So I lined them all up so I could make sure I had the correct number on there. It's number 12. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is where I'm repeating again. I repeat like three or four times. You don't want the same uh, designer paper next to each other. And, but you do want to use the same paper like three to four times in the piece uh, to keep your eye kind of moving around. Okay. So what are we doing now? I don't know what we're doing. We're just sitting here chit chat. Now, um, I have the one paper, this one, this one right here. I can actually use it on the same tiles that touch each other because there are different sections in there that really could get away with not being the same paper, if that makes any sense. Does it make sense in my head? So you take your tile and you put it on the back of your paper. You want to make sure if you have an orientation uh, going the right way. And you're going to number that. You trace it and you number it. And you're putting your tile face down on the back of the paper. Face down on the back of the paper. Check the orientation. Trace it out. Write your number on there because this, this has to do with your mapping. You're mapping it out now, y'all. And then you're going to cut it out. 
Now it's okay for you to cut your pieces out slightly bigger than your actual corrugate tile, which I recommend on account of that can be trimmed. You can trim it down, but it's sure hard to add it back. Mm, just can't quite do it, all right? So I'm going to lay those on top of the pieces over there. Now an option is you can actually glue these onto your tile as you're going along. That is totally up to you. And I just do this for all 5,000 tiles. <laughs> it's not 5,000 tiles. It feels like 5,000, but it's not. In this one, I think I forgot to put my number on. Forgot to. But I catch it later and add it later. So no worries. Don't be worrying them. Because really, none of the squares and or tiles are, are actually the same size anyway. It just makes it easier, yeah, to map it out. Just saying. So, now what? We just do that a lot for a long time. All those tiles. So, I've got all my tiles, designer paper cut, and laying, down, uh, laying on top of the tile. Now, I'm pulling off my map number and uh, gluing the designer paper onto the tile with gel medium. That's a card. I'm just smashing it all, making sure it's all nice and married on there. And then I'm just going to set it back side over there on my map. And I do that for every piece. Okay? You want to uh, check your orientation as you're going along. Make sure you're matching your numbers up. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do. And uh, so, those are over there drying. I'm going to, this is where I'm gluing the um, the chipboard onto the back of my easel piece because like I said, I, I plan to make it bigger. And really I could have just made an easel board myself and without having to have uh, bought the frame from the Dollar Tree. Now here's another option for you. On the first frame I did, I used acrylic black paint and went around each tile with acrylic black paint. And the benefit of that is you can tuck it into your corrugate edges and they're not quite as visible. But I do like the corrugate, so, you know. So I'm going to use the uh, the ink and I'm going to ink around them. Trim, as you can see, I'm trimming, trimming the paper down to uh, fit better to the corrugate tile. Just, yes, I'm going to show you me inking the edges. Mm -hmm. Like I said, there will be two other parts. One will, the second part will be up in a few days. I'm not sure, three or four days. And then the third and final part will be a week from uh, the, this day's video went up, which is going to be, I don't know when, it's going to be 2018, April, May 2018-ish. <laughs> Turn them all up, inking all the edges. Assembly line, y'all. Assembly line. Okay. Now for my focal square, I need to. That's the designer paper I'm going to use. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, that was no choking matter. So I've got charcoal there, and I'm just going over my line, uh, my focal image square, and I'm putting it on the back of my designer paper. And I'm just going to transfer it by rubbing on it uh, with my finger. And to help keep me from getting charcoal all over everything, I'm going to wipe it off the back of my uh, frame map with a baby wipe, y'all. It's wet, so it's a little too wet, but that's all right. Neither here nor there. Clean it up. Trimming out my square because I don't need to, uh, to put all that other paper underneath my tiles. Wiping that off, too. I'm going to get my map, and uh, as you can see, I painted it my uh, my mat easel board doohickey thing. <laughs> Black. Black, y'all. See? Looking good. It's making me happy. Here's my map. My size shrunk for some reason or something. I did some whatever mismeasurement. <laughs> Ruler challenged here, y'all. I have rulers, I just don't answer to. <laughs> just saying. So, any hoots, I'm going to take my uh, focal square paper. 
You don't have to use paper. You can just leave a black background or any other color background for that matter. And yep, that's that's pretty close because I made it actually made it a lot bigger than I needed. Well, maybe not a lot, but I made it bigger than I needed. I'm going to use some matte medium to adhere that down onto the easel board. And I'm just going to go ahead and smear the matte medium everywhere because why not? So here we are. End of the video number one with our map and our pre-layout glue dam. So that's really wrapping up number one. We'll see you guys in a few days for part two. Thanks for watching and happy arting, y'all.